What is up guys, my name is Ignans, welcome back to the channel. Today we will be taking a deeper look into a large bank named Citigroup, ticker symbol C. This week we already compared it to Bank of America and there seems to be at least some opportunity with the current dividend yield. This Wednesday was really great as the stock jumped 4% to the highs and now we are at $56.96, still up 2.65% for the week. But 2022 is not great as of yet, with the stock being down for 9.92%, and also down a bit for the last 5 years, lower for 5.85%. Price to earnings is promising now at 5.61, and they are paying a dividend, which now comes at a yield of 3.59%. So for today's analysis, first we'll take a look into Citigroup's most recent earnings report, Report, then financials and fundamental ratios, after that what analysts think the stock should be trading at, then if any super investors are holding the stock, and lastly we'll take a look into the technicals of the price chart. Then we will be able to better understand if this could be an interesting pick right now. There's nothing else I want to add, so let's start. Citigroup shares slide after fourth quarter profit declines 26%, so the company's net income decreased to $3.2 billion, a reduction of 26%, and and there was an 18% year-over-year rise in operating expenses, coming in at $13.5 billion for the quarter. So the stock fell by 1% on the report, but they actually managed to beat analysts' expectations. On top line, they reported $17 billion for the fourth quarter, where analysts expected $16.75 billion, so up $250 million. And then on bottom line, they brought in $1.46 per share versus the predicted $1.38, which is a bid for $0.08 cents per share. So even though their net income dropped by 26% and their operating expenses increased 18% year over year, they still managed to bring earnings at a high level that not only met but beat analysts' estimates. Now let us take a deeper look into financials, and this is here the revenue history of the last 5 years. So back in 2016, they were bringing in $83 billion on the trillion toll months, then in 2017 that increased to $88.9 billion. In 2018 on the trillion toll months, they had $97 billion. 2019 it was already over $100 billion at 103, but then it looks like the pandemic took its toll on the bank, as with the third quarter of 2020 they had $94.7 billion on the trillion 12 months, already under $100 billion. Then by the middle of 2021 it dropped to $80 billion. And now with the fourth quarter in, we are again lower at $79.86 billion. So revenues have been consistently increasing for three years, but with the pandemic there have been a drop, with the worst one on the fourth quarter of 2020, where we saw a decrease in year-over-year -year quarterly revenue at 23.52%. The only bright side here is that currently revenues are moving sideways, and if we assume that the situation will be getting better onwards, then we will be seeing growth rather than more losses. Second part I would like to take a look into is the price to book ratio. So back in 2016 it was at 0.64, then with the price increasing and book value dropping, price to book increased to 0.84, in 2018 we had the price dropping and book value starting to increase, so price to book was at 0.57, then just before the pandemic in 2019 the price was surging, so price to book at 1.8, by the end of 2020 the price was just under 60, with price to book at 0.62, and recently with the price going a bit lower, we also see the price to book decreasing at 0.56. So looking at the price to book, the best time to buy in was back in 2020, where the ratio was at or under 0.5, but for the majority of time it still was at around 0.7, so considering it at 0.56 is not the worst idea. Also it's good to see that starting with 2017, the book value for Citigroup has been consistently increasing, meaning that there is increasing value under those shares. Next one are the shares outstanding. So back in 2016 it was at 2.88 billion shares, then with 2017 that was decreased to 2.7 billion, 2018 a 7.6% decrease to 2.5 billion, in 2019 we again had a decrease to 2.25 billion shares, then by the end of 2020 we were almost at 2 billion shares with 2.1 billion, and with the fourth quarter of 2021 that is at 2.002 billion shares. 
so this suggests that each year-over-year -year quarter was smaller than the last, with the smallest decrease in the shares outstanding being in the middle of 2021, where it was decreased by 0.53%, and then the largest decrease was almost 10% by the second part of 2019, going from 2.4 to 2.2 billion shares. Overall, Citigroup in 5 years managed to buy back 886 million shares, which at the current price of $57 per share, is a buyback worth over $50 billion, on average $10 billion spent on buying back shares every year. Now next metric will be the dividend yield. So back in 2017 it was at 1.07%, then in a year in 2018 as the payout increased, the yield went up to 1.87%, as the price kept on going sideways in 2019 the yield was at 2.07%, then as the pandemic started the price dropped, but payouts kept on increasing, so the yield shoot up to over 4% at 4.02%, with 2021 the price went a bit higher, so the yield did decrease to 2.98%, and with the recent slowdown as they kept on increasing payouts, the yield is now a bit higher at 3.55%. So overall we can find that as the payouts kept on increasing, the dividend yield percentage was also on the increase. But now let's further look into it with our dividend investing watchlist. So here is the Citigroup's tab in the watchlist, and the 5 year dividend yield history is in. We can find that on average in 5 years the dividend yield was at 2.6%. This suggests that for 3 years up until 2020 the dividend yield was under the 5 year average and with 2020 starting we have been continuously over the 5 year average. So the worst yield was back in 2017 at 1.07% under the average for 58.91% and the best time to buy in was by the end of 2020 where the yield was at almost 5% at 4.84 85.85% higher than its 5 year average. But currently we are looking at a yield of 3.77%, which compared to 2.6 is 4 to 4.76% up, so that is still way higher than it has been in the last 5 years, not the worst time to lock in at least for those dividends. So we checked into financial history, but now let us take a look where analysts think the stock will be trading in one year. So here we have 25 analysts price targets for Citigroup, they range from the lows of 55 to the highs of $100 per share. The average out of these targets is at $73.45 and the current price is at $56.49. So these analyst targets suggest that on average next year Citigroup will be trading higher for 30%. Let's also take another angle. These are here earnings per share estimates for next year. And out of 25 analyst predictions, on average they suggest that next year Citigroup will be bringing in $7.72 per share. If price to earnings will remain the same, then for next year we are looking into an increase in the share price of 9.5%. So overall analysts are predicting growth, ranging from 10 to a whopping 30%. Next part will be super investors. So currently 10 portfolios are holding Citigroup, 3 of these have recently added or started a new position, and 2 reduced on their existing positions. So for example Khan Brothers Group are holding 893,000 shares, and they recently added 7.31% on their position, which now makes up 7.4% of their whole portfolio. But a way larger increase was from Hancock Classic Value, where they added 12.97% and are now holding 1,878,000 shares. Interestingly enough, that still makes only 3.7% of their portfolio. And then there is also a new buyer Fairhome Capital, where they started a new position of 20,000 shares, making it 0.08% of their whole portfolio. So overall it seems that super investors are more bullish than bearish on the name. Now there is a bit of a concerning part with insiders, as in the last 6 months they managed to do zero bias, but with the price moving lower they did 6 sells, totaling at 4.5 million dollars. So it's not great to see insiders selling out, but at least super investors are buying their shares back up. Now for the last part let's take a look into the technicals. On February 11th the stock reached the highest of $69.11 which was pretty much right there at the 200 day moving average, but that acted as a great resistance 
as the price continued on dropping from there. On the 17th we had a huge red candle, with the price going under the 100 day moving average, relative strength index dropping under 50 to 45, and the 12 day moving average of the MACD crossing the 26th one to the lower side. Then for free trading days the price was going together with the 50 day moving average, but then on the 24th we had another huge drop, with the lows of $58.37, and the relative strength index almost reaching over all that just over 30. The day was followed by a decent red candle, with the price going to the lows of $56.99 and the relative strength index finally going under 30 to 29.5. But now it seems that another week in on the 14th, there was at least some bottom at $53.83. Relative strength index was still under 30, but the gap between the MACD lines was quickly decreasing. And now with the last 3 trading days, all 3 of those were green candles. The relative strength index is still under 50 at 41, and the lines of the MACD already had a bullish crossover. The last time they did cross was by the end of 2021, and it was followed by some decent price action up from $60 to $67 per share. So it could be an interesting place to start at least a small position. If we get a few more green days ahead, then there is a possibility that the 50 day moving average will be crossing the 100 day one to the upper side, and that is another bullish indicator that we may be looking into. So we did check into all the steps, and now let's make a quick recap of what we found. For the fourth quarter the company managed to beat on both top and bottom lines, though their net income decreased and their expenses have increased. Revenues have been consistently increasing until 2020, but then the pandemic started and that also went downhill. After looking into the price to book history it seems that 0.7 is fair value, so anything under that is a discount, and it's good to see that their overall book value per share is consistently increasing. Citigroup's share buyback program is working, as in the last 5 years they managed to buy back 886 million shares. They also have consistently increased their dividend payouts, and at the current price the dividend yield is 4-5% higher than their 5 year average. Analysts are also really bullish, as for the next year they predict for the share price to go up from 10-30%. to Super investors have been buying the stock, though insiders are selling a bit. Looking into the technicals it seems like a decent position, as the relative strength index shows that not much buying is being done, but we already had a bullish crossover in the lines of the MACD. And if more green candles continue to appear, then the next bullish signal is the 50 day moving average crossing the 100 day one to the upper side. So that is it with today's analysis, don't forget to support the channel and leave a thumbs up under the video. What do you think is Citigroup a worthy pick right now? Share your stance on it in a comment below. If you would be interested in getting access to my watchlists, then consider memberships. By becoming a member you will get access to Discord, where I share the files and all the buys and sells exactly when I do them. This could be a great option to track my moves closely. Last week I did an analysis on another company, so if you would be interested in that, then click on a video that is currently on the screen. And that was it from my side, thank you for watching and I will be seeing you all in the next one.